female leaders made their mark in the last month's World Economic Forum in Davos. One of them was former Nigerian Finance Minister Ngozi Okonjo Iwela. I asked her about the Nigerian economy and that of the developing world and why she's pushing for her current advocacy immunization. Her answers right after this. Welcome back. You're watching World Inside with me, Tian Wei, coming to you Monday to Friday on CGTN. At the World Economic Forum, which wrapped up last month, one of the biggest presents this year is that of female leaders from all over the world, among them also from developing countries. Ngozi Okonjo Ibella, she served two terms as finance minister of Nigeria and was previously managing director of the World Bank. She currently chairs the board of the Global Alliance of Vaccine and Immunization. She shared her views on the health of Nigeria's economy and her advocacy to give children a leg up in fighting communicable diseases. Before the interview, take a look at this background. Where a child is born determines how much he or she is vaccinated against diseases. A child in a developing country is ten times more likely to die of a vaccine-preventable disease than a child from an industrialized one. In some countries, up to 70 percent of children do not receive the full set of vaccines. The lowest coverage is found in sub-Saharan Africa. In Africa as a whole, at least 4 in 10 children are not immunized against measles, a major cause of infant mortality that kills one child every minute. The WHO has been pushing for vaccination against hepatitis B since 1993, yet it kills approximately 1 million people each year. Recommendations have also been made for yellow fever, yet it claims 30,000 lives every year. There's still a long way to go in making vaccines and immunization accessible around the world. I'm joined here on the side of the World Economic Forum 2018 by Dr. Ngazi Okandro Iwala. Now I managed to learn your name. Thank you former finance minister of Nigeria, and certainly the chairwoman of the board with the organization, Gabby. Well, let her to explain what is going on here. Well, from the government to the World Bank to now the PPP fund uh, for health care issue has quite transitioned. Yes. You've always been there, very <laughs> successful. What is behind this, all of these transitions? Well, it's public service that is behind it. Um, I like to serve, so I served in the World Bank internationally. I served in my government as both finance and foreign minister, and now I'm serving internationally again with the Global Alliance for yeah. Vaccines. Talking about vaccines, there are a lot of issues. Ongonjo, can I be frank with you? Mm. First of all, there are political leaders in the world that are very skeptical about the functional vaccine. I just wonder whether that has any impact on your work now. No, I don't think it does, and I think the skepticism is very limited. People have seen the power of vaccines. Gavi is an organization that has immunized more than 600 million children in the 16 years of its existence and saved 9 million lives. Mm -hmm. Our objective is to immunize another 300 million more by 2020, and we will save 6 million lives. You cannot quarrel with facts. Mm -hmm. But what if somebody send a tweet and say, you know, this is related to autism or whatever? Well, you know, we've got the science, um, you know, to show that vaccines uh, are safe. Yeah. And it's very important to stress that. Yes, there's always in every country a little anti-vaccine movement. But I think that's in the minority. We've mm -hmm. not really encountered great problems because of that. Vaccines are safe. And if we don't immunize our children, you know, we are going to cause problems to other children. Mm. Of course, an incident happened last year. Mm -hmm. What if it happened this year? Uh, somebody just went on the social media and went all the way against the vaccines. Are you going to respond to that? No, I think what we'll do is we have those who are in the science, those who know that vaccines are safe. They will be able to come out and testify 
so that parents will continue to allow their children to be immunized. It's very, very important. Talking about vaccines, there are also other issues. For example, the cost of vaccines. That is very important for developing an emerging economy. What about that? How to bring down the cost? Absolutely. That is the mission of one of the central missions of Gavi, is to bring down the cost of vaccines. Uh, to, for developing countries. So, for instance, a vaccine that costs $100 a dose mm. um, in, in the U.S., we've been able to bring the cost down to about $4 for developing countries. So that is a good example of the, mark, of the power of negotiation of Gavi. Mm. But on the other hand, what about the IPR issue? I mean, this is very important. Mm. But, of course, you also want to bring down the cost. So how is that going to reconcile with one another? Uh, well, you know, first of all, the, the vaccine manufacturers, they are also very responsible and responsive. Of course, what we do is promise them volume. Because Gavi works in 73 yes. countries, we can get the volume enough to compensate them so that they at least cover their costs and make a little bit of a margin. Uh, so with that, if we can mobilize dem uh, demand from uh, so many countries, then they are assured because it's very expensive sometimes to do research on vaccines, to manufacture the vaccines, takes a special process, and we can't expect them to do it for free. So we have to guarantee them a volume, and we do that. Mm. What about the cost of it when it comes to seeking help? I understand this is a public-private partnership that you are trying to do, but it's just only the very initial stage of it, I mean, when it comes to PPT worldwide. Yeah. So what is the experiences and the takeaways you've already gained so far about this? It's very, very good experience. A great experience. Gavi has been rated as one of the most effective yeah. international organizations by almost every measure. You can, you know, the, the UK uh, um, monitoring system, uh, objective systems that look at how uh, organizations perform, have, they've rated Gavi at the top. Yeah. Our experience has been good because we are a public-private partnership that brings around the table mm. private sector pharmaceuticals from developing and developing, including in China. Mm -hmm. We are working with, uh, with uh, companies in China, in India, to manufacture vaccines. Mm. So the cost will not be going up too much? Not too much. We negotiate with yeah. them. We explain to them and we help make sure they cover their costs. Yeah. But having said that, though, mm. you wouldn't worry much because you've got the international development aid coming from the UK government. Mm -hmm. You've got 1.5 billion US dollars coming from the Gates Foundation. Mm -hmm. So Gabby wouldn't worry. Mm -hmm. But there are many others out there that probably need some support. So how to get that, the most uh, stable a platform established? Well, look, uh, for Gavi, uh, not only do we get the support of, uh, the, is there are many governments, it's not just UK, there's uh, Norway, there's Germany, mm -hmm. there's US, Canada, I can go on, they all are members, Australia, that support us, and developing countries are there too, uh, you know, so we have all of them round the table. Um, and then we have foundations like Gates. Yeah. But the pharmaceutical companies are there also because their contribution is to help deliver the vaccine. So for a public-private partnership to succeed, every participant must have something they're gaining right. from it. Mm -hmm. That's the success of Gavi. The pharmaceuticals are gaining a large Everybody market. Everybody is a winner. Everybody is a winner. Mm. Civil society is there too, and civil society is helping us monitor yeah. the implementation of the vaccine program. Mr. Okondo Ivela is coming from Nigeria. That country is a middle income mixed economy and emerging market with expanding manufacturing, financial service, communications, technology, and entertainment sectors, previously hindered by years of mismanagement like some of the other developing economies. Economic reform in the past decade have not put Nigeria, her country, back on track toward achieving its full economic potential. to your other role, former Minister of Finance with Nigeria. Mm. I understand during your tenure you managed to negotiate it down, the debt Nigeria owned mm. to the West. Mm. How did you get that done? It was very tough. <laughs> Behind was closed doors, but you now can reveal the secret. <laughs> it was $30 billion of debt owed to the yes. Paris Club. That's a lot. Um, and uh, we were able to do it by sh demonstrating that Nigeria could deliver reforms. So the, How the, did you demonstrate? We, we did it. 
You know, we restructured the economy, we, we put in place a, a very uh, better macroeconomic management, meaning we controlled inflation, we brought down our fiscal deficit, mm -hmm. we worked on corruption issues, we uh, tried to improve our governance, right. we put uh, electronic platforms in place to help us manage our, our finances. There were so many things that we did to show that, look, if you forgive this debt, we are going to do, use it well. Mm. Secondly, we also created a virtual a, a fund where the money that would have been going for debt relief, we used it for programs for poor people in the country. Mm -hmm. So they don't, they, they, that, the creditors, which were the G7, they could actually see that the money that they are forgiving is being put to good use for yeah. poor people. So right. that's what we did. Having said that, though, mm. what about the development of the developing economies? Mm. Uh, what is the most important thing now they need? Do they need trade or do they need development aid? Or this is, could be a, co a wonderful combination, but how that combination is done, I think is a big question mark. Well, You've been working for the World Bank also as a managing director, so I think you know very well about that. Well, let me say this. The, 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 days of aid are numbered. Many countries are not as willing to give the kind of aid they did in the past. So every developing country is looking to see how can they um, improve their economy so that they can create jobs for their people, mm. tax better, mm. and then, you know, uh, develop for themselves. Mm. You know, so th I don't think we should be looking to aid. Aid helps especially for programs in education and health. So I would strongly support that countries that want to support education, health, they should do that, investment in human capital. Mm -hmm. But countries should complement that by improving their economies, diversifying mm -hmm. and creating jobs. Mm -hmm. There is the proposal coming from China called Belt and Road Initiative, mm -hmm. in which Africa could also be involved mm -hmm. into the partnerships. But many wonder how that would work, particularly how um, instrumental people would like to put their efforts into this, into seeking a kind of possibility. You know you need to put into work and effort in order to have something realized. Well, I, I think the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative is a good one. Um, and, and, you know, African countries should get involved in it. Why is it? It is seeking to lay down essential infrastructure that can improve connectivity and trade between countries. And, and I think we, that is a very good thing. Um, but we have to be very clear for, for this Belt and Road Initiative, countries have to be clear that the infrastructure being put in place mm -hmm. will really be one that serves their needs. Mm -hmm. So it's not Belt and Road for someone else, it's Belt and Road that serves your investment needs. So I think countries should be very clever and transparent mm -hmm. and open about it. And from what I see, the Chinese government is ready and willing to work with those countries. For the African continent, we have some major infrastructural needs mm. uh, that are regional, mm. you know, connecting countries. You have something like the Lagos-Dakar road that will connect the whole of West Africa. That could be part of the Belt and Road. Why not? We have uh, plans for road and rail that connect the south of the continent to the north. Uh, I think if that is made part of the Belt and Road, mm. connecting to East Africa, which is also uh, can connect us to China, that is all very good. We should do the project making sure that those at the, uh, the end, the countries participating really benefit. Let's move on to the next question. Mm. You know, I see you often at World Economic Forum. <laughs> you were in politics 20, 30 years ago. Mm. Now you are working on this uh, Gabi Association. But how do you see women leadership has been transforming over the years? Um, well, let me say this. I've had a very privileged, you know, I'm privileged to have had a good career. Mm. I'm actually not a typical politician. I was no, working not. at the World Bank as Vice President and Managing Director when my country asked me to come and serve as Finance Minister. Um, and I think I'm the longest serving. I did seven years, four, three years, and then and four years. Then, so I can I'm tell you, just love challenges. <laughs> <laughs> they, exactly. It's very challenging. So I think um, that career has something at its core, uh -huh. and that's service. So when, as a woman leader, as any leader, yeah. when you're going into leadership positions, you should be very clear why you're doing right. it. And for me, it is what can I do to give back to people on uh, internationally poor people? What can I do to make a difference? 
with the training I've been privileged to have, mm -hmm. what can I do in my country and my continent to make a difference? Mm -hmm. So that has been, and, and do I enjoy? If you're a leader who does not enjoy what they're doing, then you can't give your best. Right. So I must be enjoying the job. And at Gavi now, it's a privilege to chair an organization right. that is delivering for the world's children. Okay, but it's not always enjoyable when it mm. has those complicated politics going on. Whether it's internationally I, or I internally. Agree. I'm I sure agree. when you are doing those uh, discussions, or you try to bring off the debt yes. of Nigeria. Yes. Inside Nigeria, there were a lot of debates going on. Absolutely. Right about that. Yeah. You, you are absolutely right. In Nigeria, there were a lot of debates. There were people who didn't believe in the debt relief. They said, oh, it's all going to go back to corruption. Mm -hmm. There were people who, who uh, attack when you're trying to do financial reforms. Yes. There are people who have vested interests also who don't believe in what you're doing. So, yes, being a finance minister was not fun, mm -hmm. but there, I had a lot of commitment to the job. And so that you're not afraid that through. people have different opinions about you? Absolutely not. Of course they will. If everybody loves you, then you're probably not doing your job. Yeah. Because if you're trying to correct things in an economy, right. if you're fighting corruption, those who are corrupt, are they going to like you? The answer is no. Mm. They will not. We see women leaders also in Africa these days, but not necessarily in abundance. Any advice? The men should open up. <laughs> and the women should fight. <laughs> Nobody will give you anything, so you have to fight for it. But it has been proven over and over again. There are studies. When you have women contributing and leading, mm -hmm. the economy does better. The economy improves. When you educate women, you educate a household, you educate the country, and you mm -hmm. educate the world. I can see the vitality and energy <laughs> of Mugandhi. Thank you so much for Thank being you. with us. Thank, Thank you. you. All, All right. the best. Take care. Thank Bye. You. And that is all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more, try to find us World Inside CGTN into your search engine or check out our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and see the way ball. From me, Tian Wei, and everyone on the World Inside team, thanks for watching. Tune in again next time for Insight across China and around the world. Good night.